Hi guys, this is John Newton, Snap-on John 100, and this is the first in the series of um, Youth Scout videos. Uh, this one's entitled Basic Fundamentals of Firecraft, and this is going to be for uh, anybody from like Weeblow age all the way up through Eagle, and um, or anybody else that doesn't have hardly any experience so I'm going to be doing them very basic thing so um, first of all for fire to exist you gotta have three things it's called the triangle of fire and that is heat oxygen and fuel if you take any away if any of those are not there you will not get fire and if um, you have fire and you take any one of them away the fire will go out that's why when firemen spray water on a burning house, they're not taking away the oxygen and they're not taking away the fuel, but what they're doing is they're cooling it, the house down, so they're taking the heat away. So uh, that's one way of putting a fire out. So if you have trouble with your fire, always think of those three things. Is it getting smothered? Do I have enough oxygen there? Uh, do I have enough heat source? Or is my... Uh, do I have the fuel? Okay, so the first thing I just want to get started here is I want to get a fire started to warm myself up. And what I'm going to be using is called charred cloth. It's cotton cloth. This happens to be a blue jean or denim material. And I'm going to um, be going over that stuff much later. But... Uh, I just want to start this out so that I can get something going here. I'm going to be using what's known as a fire piston, and it works on the principle of compressing air, causes the temperature to rise, and if you get the pressure high enough, the temperature will get hot enough to combust something that's flammable inside here, and then you transfer that little ember into your bird's nest. So without further ado, let me get started here. First of all, I'm going to take a piece of charred cloth and stick it in my bird's nest where that ember is going to go. And now I'm going to take a tiny little piece of charred cloth. It's really important to keep all this dry. So, putting this inside, there's a little spot here for the material you're trying to get to burn and I got a glowing ember there so now all I have to do is transfer into my which I did get this down What I've got here is called a bird's nest, and this is the part that you end up blowing into flames. We have fire. Ah. We have fire that's burning me. Now, the next most important thing is Besides the tender, you gotta have kindling. That's stuff that's so small, it's the size of a pencil lead. Okay. Let's put that on there. I got my fire, I can start warming my hands up. Let me move that camera so you can see better. What I have around me is what I'm going to go over today, and that's the um, kindling and the tinder and the fuel wood. What sizes they are.
I'm going to go ahead and start putting smaller, smaller pieces that are about pencil size. here let me get that going pencil size and a little bigger I didn't just start this by putting fire on the ground. I got the dirt, the snow out of the way, and then I put down some bark from a uh, grapevine. So we'll let this get going, and then I'll start putting on what's called fuel wood. That's the stuff that's behind the fire that's a lot bigger. And that can go up to about the size of your arm. You don't want to get much bigger than the size of your forearm. Okay, what I've got here before me is tender is on the right. This is the fluffy stuff. And that's the where you start. That's the part that you want to start your fire with. You think fluffy, hairy, fuzzy, lots of surface area. And over next to it is that is the uh, kindling. And as you can see, with my hand, that's the size. These are like smaller than a toothpick. So you want to have, you want to start with stuff that's smaller than a toothpick, and then you work your way up. It's called building the fire. Then the next size kindling is about the size of a pencil, and a little bit bigger. Once you get about the size of your finger, then you can start using your fuel wood. Here's examples of kindling that's bigger. Okay, this kind of stuff is bigger. Right here, this is the kindling that you use once the fire gets going. Here's another piece right here. That's about the size, a little about almost the size of my finger. That's about as big as you go, and then you start this piece right here. This piece back here, that's considered fuel wood size. So you actually build your fire. And you saw how easy it is once you're all prepared. That didn't take very long at all. Well, I think I'm gonna make me some hot chocolate. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that the first in the series of basic fundamentals of firecraft and um, please subscribe like the video and as always I'd like to see your comments until we meet again God bless well I got you all here I wanted to discuss fire safety a little bit because that's uh, you don't want to ever burn the forest down trying to stay warm so it, in the winter, it's not as critical because you got all the snow. So um, 
in the Triangle of Fire, you are taking the heat away when you've got all the snow around. So it's not going to burn out here. But uh, typically you want to clear out a, about a three or four, five foot circle and make sure all the debris and, and everything is ground litter is away. And um, the best thing to do, if you can, is to dig a pit into the earth and then um, line that with, what I like to line mine with is either tiny small twigs or uh, best, best of all is I like to put grapevine bark in there, line that so that the um, fire's not trying to, you're not sucking the heat out of the fire with the cold earth or if it's damp too, that's even worse. So uh, you make your fire in a pit and then when you're done, you just take the dirt that you dug out and cover over the ashes after you've uh, poured water on it and then it's completely safe. And that way, then you can camouflage the area and nobody even knows that you even had a fire there in the first place. In the winter, you can't do that because the ground is frozen. But there is a lot of flammable debris on the ground that's all frozen. But once you got a fire going, then it, it dries out and then it becomes combustible. So you also don't want to ever start a fire and then go off someplace and leave it unattended. So those are just some basic, most of it's common sense, but um, you have to be really careful on a real windy day. If it's really dry out uh, and you don't need a fire and it's windy, it's better to not even have one. If you've got your kit with you, then you can make a, uh, you can, uh, use an alcohol stove or something like that to small. The reason why I'm doing this series is because I've noticed that uh, most everybody I've met in Scouts uh, have really poor fire skills and if you're ever caught out anywhere for survivability, being able to make a fire is the most important skill you could ever own. So uh, this is really important stuff. That's why it's, it's really important to get this. This fire that I made looked completely effortless. But there was actually a lot of, um, a lot of practice and dirt time went into being able to do it like that.